let's feel like we're going to be on a podcast tonight that's what i like to do i like to to get you know pumped as you guys know but you know yeah there you go oh yeah the faces yeah there we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh podcast for sci-fi tune in let's talk uh hosted by moose magic mike and gang god yeah talking everything sci-fi so turn up your radio bringing you that extra like extra terrestrial from movies to comics plenty interviews we got it from long live and prosper to being me of scotty you're in the right place if it's sci-fi you like yeah yeah where all things sci-fi come to life Woo! podcast for sci-fi let's go that's it dave what's going on what's going on i see you out there hello everybody welcome to a podcast for sci-fi pre-game before we start this podcast we like to get hey lady the box is here Bam. wow you? they were i think they were on before us <laughs> they were. we were with you guys as well unbelievable wow we're joining their hey, podcast hey why why we're waiting and while uh, everybody's waiting to get here check, check, i want to show you something what i what i picked up Oh, oh, I think you picked up something, and you were like, oh, I didn't anything up. No, no, no. You see, you see this little thing? Hold on. Let me see if I can show Okay. Oh, it's an Xbox. Oh. You see how he says, no, 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 I didn't pick anything up? He picked something up. He picked see up the new is? Xbox. No, Ooh, this is not the new Xbox, but this is a, a Xbox official gear. Uh, this is, a, um, and, and it lights up, so it's like a nightlight. It's like a lamp you put on, oh. and yeah, I, I, uh, I saw this. I was like, I've never seen anything like this before. And Did you uh, pay to the Disney store? No, no, no. But uh, <laughs> it's you know it's it, it helps him with his issues that he have at night. You know it's kind of dark and stuff like that. So he needed a little bit of a night light. <laughs> yeah, well you know everybody needs a little light in their life. There you go. Oh, I like that. Yeah, oh. there you go. You light up my life. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Oh, oh I like that. I hope yeah. that's, I, I hope that's coming in my care package. You know what? You know what won't be coming. It, you'll never <laughs> see it again. <laughs> there you go. And then it lights up, uh, and I, I, I the uh, USB just fell, but uh, but I'll have to check that out. So I'm I'm excited about that. Hey, don't worry <laughs> about it. Just send it in a box. I'll check it out for you. Hey, hey, Gigi, he's gonna check it out, and he's gonna put it right back in the box, and it's gonna go on the shelf. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. That's that true. true. That might be true. Mm -hmm. He gonna All be right. like, that's pretty cool. I'll put it away for later. Let me put that aside. Right. Yeah, put it aside. Put it in a box. The same Let me some else I got. Look at this, Star Wars fans out there. Uh, you saw my before. Uh, my geek, uh, my stormtrooper from Geeky Tiki or Geek. Yes. Tiki. yes. So take a look at this. Boom. Look at this. Oh, this is snap. Yoda's coming through there. He's a space ghost. Yoda. Yoda. Which it's Yoda like, is that? Um, it's, it is the child. It's baby Yoda. Okay. All right. And, is, um, is, there any, is there any other one at this point? <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> this is true. I'm actually really cool. I'm excited about opening that up. I'm also excited about this one. This is Chewbacca. Oh, Chewy. Tiki is what you see there. Yeah. In the is Tiki room. Yeah. Tiki room. Tiki, Tiki. Ah, you're starting to gather quite a collection of those now. Uh, uh, e, e, Tiki, Tiki. Yes. <laughs> wow. And we're trying to we're trying to keep people, not send them away. I know. And then I have, of course. Of course. Vida. Absolutely. You can't yeah. go wrong with it. Yeah, so I'm excited. I'm excited about getting those out. So, well, you're excited, but you're excited to what? Do what with them? I uh, just put them on a shelf and leave them there. But you see some of the other ones there. You see they have um, Chewbacca, uh, Vader, they have the Stormtrooper, which I picked up. They have R2-D2, they have a Yoda, and then they have uh, Boba Fett down there. Oh, yeah. hey, or, Josh, or Mando. Welcome to the show. Um, uh, Josh has some news, by the way. I'll go ahead and tell him. Come on, Josh. I see you down there. I see you. I see you. Josh got his iPhone. Oh, he got his iPhone. Nice, nice. Oh. Where's my pause button at? I think I have one. Right. So, so, Come so on. he, so he's not jelly anymore. Okay, I got you. <laughs> I, hey, I gotta tell you, there's nothing to be jealous about except for the camera. Really, I mean, honestly, it's just it's a little faster. You know, it's no big deal. So you haven't noticed the difference? Not really. Not really. Okay. Good. I feel good. I mean, I, the form factor is different. Like I said, but yeah. I mean, ultimately, right now, no. Matter of fact, I think a lot of the apps are still trying to update to all this new mm -hmm. stuff or the new iOS. And oh, he said he I'm hasn't happy. gotten it yet. Oh, you haven't? What? Oh, I man. Oh, I feel bad for him, then. Oh, man. Oh, See? Oh, wow, Mike. <laughs> man. Oh. Taz, That's right. Taz, Put your head down. Down. <laughs> um, or maybe I was just rubbing it in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm sorry. See? He should, he should get it later in the week in uh, 2021. 
Yes. That stinks. He's, he's right. going to get it when the 13 comes out. Uh, that, that's messed up. You know what, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's horrible. That's horrible. That's horrible. These guys. Yeah, yeah. Tad's in. Welcome, Tad. Thanks for joining us. Like, uh, I can't even, I can't even re- repeat what Dave said there. That's how horrible that is. Yeah, don't put that up. <laughs> Yeah, don't don't show that. Don't show that, man. This will be the <laughs> this will be the tagline that goes on social media. Um, um all right. Well, let's I'm see ready. if we can start. Uh, yeah, I think we can start. Yeah. Uh what do you want to talk about? Now don't entertain it, Tad. Yes, Unbelievable. Don't hey, hey, where's the button that ejects people? <laughs> Check Dave. No, don't take Jack Dave. No, we can't we can't eject anybody. We can't afford to. <laughs> <laughs> is Jeopardy barely keeping the lights on? <laughs> um, where we're, I do have a Jeopardy theme song, Dave. I think so. Anyway, that doesn't matter. I'm about to record anyway. Here we go. Ah, uh, the Star Trek Discovery recap on this episode of uh, the podcast, of course. Mando, you can't go a week without talking about that because you'll miss Baby Yoda. Why would you want to do that? Chris Hemsworth or uh, Hulk Hemsworth was in the social media in his post, and uh, we're going to talk about him and just how big he's gotten for either, what is it, Marvel or wrestling? I'm not sure. And then, of course, Gremlins. Yes, Gremlins going to make a return, and uh, let's talk about that and anything else that comes up. But first, we do this. According to Wikipedia, a nerd is a person seen as overly intellectual, obsessive, introverted, or lacking social skills. Many so-called nerds are described as being shy, quirky, pedantic, and unattractive. We're here to prove Wikipedia right. Oh, look who they let in. This is Podcast for Sci-Fi, where all things sci-fi come to life. If it's fantasy, sci-fi, gaming, movies, interviews, we're talking about it. We're talking about it. This is Podcast for Sci-Fi. And here's your host, Moose, Game God, and Magic Mike. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to Podcast for Sci-Fi. Sci-Fi comes to life. That's right. Yes. And by the way, uh, episode number 277, if you didn't know. We have the whole crew here tonight, and, and we're welcoming everybody from the chat room, of course, uh, who's joined us here today. And uh, I don't know. Uh, we have we have a lot of that stuff to talk about. Are you guys ready? <laughs> yes. I, I'm just excited that you got the right number. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. There's sometimes, you know, I'm not perfect, Game God. I know you like to think I am, but I'm not. I'm really Pretty close. 99.44. Was it the uh, Santa Claus 2 episode where the head elf says one mistake in 10,000 years? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. So uh, where do we go from here? Where do we go? Uh, I don't know where do you want to lead off. Uh, let's talk about some of the social media stuff that's okay. been talked about out there. With uh, You got Chris Hemsworth, of course, the mighty Thor in the social media. He posted a, a picture. Man. Um, yeah. Now what? What? This picture is him like picking up some. Uh, it looks like some kind of a. Uh, He's picking up Thor's hammer. Crossfit <laughs> type device. It looked like a big wheel at first. I thought it was like one of the the just rubber you know tire, but it, it's not. It was something else. It probably had a lot of weight to it because it looked like he was struggling to pick it up, wasn't he? Well, it does look like he's struggling. That may have been for the picture. I don't know, but it, it may be a it, something that's wrapped in some. It looks like a tire anyway. Uh, man, he's huge. Oh my gosh. Listen, that's photoshopped. That's photoshopped. Come <laughs> Are you on, guys. So? That's photoshopped. Man, that guy, there's no way that guy got that huge in that amount of time. I mean, he's big. Can he's you do big. it? Can you do it naturally is a question. I mean, you know. Well, that is, that is a question. And I, I don't know if I want to go down that route because I hope he did do it naturally, but that's gotta be photoshopped. I mean, that are, are those 24 inch pythons? <laughs> they look like 24 inches to me. Hey, I get that. I don't care if it was naturally or not, but man, he is getting in the right shape. And matter of fact, Hulk said something. He, he's quoted on there. He said, uh, "He's ready, brother." Uh, but then he goes on to say, "But he's good, good enough, good looking enough to to play me." So th- this is going to be great. I, he think, looks- I think Chris Hemsworth definitely is uh, better looking than Hulk Hogan ever was. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. well, yeah. Hey, we, hey, if you can pull off Hulk Hogan's long silky hair, <laughs> oh, it looks nice. Look at there. There's, there you go. Boom! Right there. 
All right. Anyway, showing a uh, back of the box, a goodie. <laughs> put, 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 yeah. put it back there, and then we'll just kind of put it. it looks like there a graphic. Looks like a graphic. Well, there you go. Anyway. There you go. But, yeah, but uh, I think I think uh, if it is him, and if it, I mean, if it is him, it is him. I'm joking around here with the Photoshop piece, but man, he he's putting in some work. He's he's got a good trainer. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um. And the the question is, um. How long is he going to keep that? And if he's going to keep that for Marvel? Yeah. Well, I have read somewhere from from Chris Pratt that said, "Hey, hey, stop working out." <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like, now he's a he's a big guy. I don't. I forgot. You know, we we've met him, and uh, he's a big boy. He's not something that uh, um, he he's not a lightweight at all. Even before he was, I mean, when he was just regular Thor. Now he's going to be superhuman Thor. Um, you know, gigantic Thor. Uh, he. I think it's going to be for, for Thor as well, Game God. I really do. And I think it's going to come across really well, it, particularly after the last time we saw him as Thor. And of mm-hmm. course, a little, you know, a little pudgy, and they made a big joke about that. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, he's definitely uh, shredded. Yeah. You know, I think it will it will come across well, and it'll be a nice way to, to say that's Thor. Because what it's going to look like, we're not going to remember what he first looked like when he came out as Thor, right? And then he got pudgy, and then he's going to be like, that's yeah. That's what I remember as Thor. So I think that's going to be a great thing. And uh, I hope it's not the last time we see him in that size. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You got to keep that up. It takes a lot of effort to, to get there and then keep it going. How many calories he's putting down a day? Oh, uh, wow. quite a bit. But he is working out all day. And, and, you know, and for what it's worth, guys, I'm sure that anybody listening to this podcast, including you guys, uh, could be the exact same way if you got paid just to work mm-hmm. out. And, and 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 take a trainer's advice and that's all you did well trainer personal chef you know right. somebody yeah he, he, that if you if you're getting paid multi-million dollars to look like that yeah hey sign me up where do i sign yeah i, I yeah i agreed uh i'm just not that talented uh, obviously i'm not as talented as as chris Hemsworth, obviously hey hey you look better than him though i want you to know that most i appreciate that yeah. my beard hey, better you're almost, you're almost big <laughs> you can play, you can play, you can play one of the thors yeah anyway um it's just you and i now magic mike hey this feels like a much better podcast anyway we'll probably get the right sound that's for sure unbelievable yes <laughs> oh my goodness look what happens to me i get <laughs> in the, i haven't been putting the box it's a little dusty in there i haven't been in the box for a while <laughs> Oh man, I tell you, I if if only you know we had that kind of time. But he does look fabulous. Uh, he's very cutting, very big, and to play. And I think we talked about this for him to play Hulk Hogan. I think he had to put on a lot of pounds. Yeah, that. we did talk about that. And Dave made a good comment. By the way, you should probably put that one up. That's a pretty good comment. Oh, what did he say? What did he say? Oh, he says Mike is. Uh, oh yeah, no, they're already not a ten. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Nine tenth out of one. Absolutely. Yeah. Nobody's nine ten nine tenth out of one. Hey, hey, don't don't knock it. Don't knock it. That's all I'm saying. Out of the one percent game. Yeah, that's right. That's what it is. Nine ten out of the one. Listen, yeah. just because you're not freezing up right now doesn't 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 mean you can yeah. go that way. Hey, <laughs> I know I know which Thor I'm playing. <laughs> yeah, you're playing the new Thor. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, I'm playing I'm playing a Thor. It's some kind of Thor. <laughs> well, that's one of the other things that just came out recently is who's going to be the new Thor and. uh Love and Thunder, right? It's in, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this. I think we've talked about it, but I was surprised to see who it was. I didn't know where they were going to go with it, but uh, Natalie, uh, uh, <laughs> sorry, him <Yes>. freezing up. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I did that. For, I did that for Dave. I did that for Dave. Dave, Dave needed, <laughs> he needed a new picture. <laughs> um, but yeah, Natalie Portman, her character um, is she's going to be Thor now. Um, which is going to be interesting to see because she's in the in the um the account uh, the uh sorry the the um article thank you Moose the article there you, go. There you go she's starting to get physically ready for it and I, I, I'd be curious to see how that's going to turn out <laughs> hey that's funny by the way <laughs> that's, that's <true>. funny <laughs> that's more that's more truth than than we've spoken all night you're correct so so so, so the thing with Natalie Portman playing the the new Thor right um if you don't if you're not familiar with the comic of this storyline that Thor eventually gets written out she she eventually doesn't make it so does that mean Natalie Portman's time as in that franchise is also coming to an end? yes of course it's so I mean I mean look Man. And the, the the franchise, it, it, look, who do you want running the show? 
You want Chris Hemsworth or you want Natalie Portman? And by the way, I'm a Natalie Portman fan. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying if you had to bank your money into a comic hero, you're banking on Chris Hemsworth as your hero, not Natalie Portman. Hey, for money, for money purposes, you do both. Boom. Well, no, I think this is a great idea. I think they're able to get to do that part of the comics that we're not everybody's familiar with, you know, with, with Jane Foster being that. And then yeah. <laughs> and then we also get to go back to Thor at some point. So yeah, yeah I, I think this is a good move by them. Uh, it'll be a, it'll be a, a great movie. I mean, it's there's a lot of people that's going to be it anyway, so yeah, and yeah, they, they did mention something about shaping up to be an Avengers five. Um, <laughs> this it's quite a bit of a That's quite scary. a bit of a lineup. That's quite scary. a bit of a lineup. Yeah. That's well, what's, what's, what scares want, you about it? Because I, I don't want it to be another Avengers. You know, I want it to be a you know a standalone movie. I don't want to try to fill time for other you know uh, superheroes. Now I get that some people might, and just like any of these movies, some people might show up for a cameo, and I'm okay with that. But when they try to build a story around it, that's when I, things get lost for me because I'd like to see more of the the the, the, the story of Thor. I mean, that's what I want to see. So, Moose, are you afraid that all the good stuff of Marvel is done? That they've they've done everything? That the storytelling is good, and oh, we're going to start. Although to they have they haven't touched, they haven't really scratched it uh, at all. I'm afraid that a lot of people think they have, and they're gonna they won't see the same. Um, or, or they're going to go in seeing the same thing. And that's what I don't want because that's not true. It's simply not true. We, we need to have the, the comic book writers write these films, and I think we'll have a lot more success at it. And I, and I, I truly mean that. And I know, no, uh, nothing to take away from the people who have written some of these other pieces of the film or, or the film, but the storylines you know, from back in the day, whether it's Mr. Sinister or whether it's Ooh, classic, uh, which they messed mm -hmm. up, or whether it's you know like all of these they're really bad guys but there's just some regular villains out there too but a, a lot of it goes in with just the storyline and so you got to build that and i'm afraid that uh, that a lot of the people who grew up watching this infinity you know uh, the infinity mm -hmm. stones or the infinity war uh, uh, you know whatever that, the that they will just mi miss it yeah the infinity gauntlets thank you uh, they'll just kind of miss it um you know Think of, I'm sitting here thinking of all the the comics, and I'm using the words from the comics that was right the movies. So it's just to me, I, I hope that people aren't doing that, and I hope that they really give it a chance uh, to kind of stand alone and stand on its own. Well, do you think they need to go uh, the same direction that they did with the Avengers and grab another storyline and just take that yeah. that direction? I yeah. think I think they, I think they need to rebuild it, like just start from the bottom back up. Mm -hmm. And that's where, but that's what comics do every yeah. single time. And that's why it's good, you know. That's why it goes well. And, but I think that the everyday movie goer who's not a comic book fan is going to be expect, expecting a big pomp and circumstance like they did in the last two movies, where they had fifty characters in it, and now they're going to go back and they're going to see five, and they'll be like, "Well, what happened to everybody?" And I think that's what's going to happen. That's the problem. That's the yeah. problem. That's what movies create, and so when you have that, you got to understand. I mean, not you, but you got to understand that that it's just not built that way. It's just the mm -hmm. the the cinematic uh, uh, pleasure for a two-hour, three-hour movie isn't built to survive on that many characters. You just got to build the story around, you know. And look, five is a lot, if you ask me. Yeah. But it's possible. We've seen it with, yeah. you know, you know, with with the Marvel movies. We haven't seen it with, you know, uh, Lord of the Rings. You know, they they weren't really able to. I mean, I say they weren't. They didn't try to do it that way. Um, you, they really had a, you know, a bad guy. Um, Somebody else, I'm sorry, I didn't get too close to the camera there, but they had a bad guy, they had uh, you know, a third party, and then they had the travelers, so they did have more than five going all in, but but still, it wasn't building the entire story around those, you know, you didn't, you didn't get that. Well, I think the big thing is that uh, when you look at these movies, they they build it up to a point where you hit it, you can't keep it there, you gotta, you gotta start all over again. It's like that cycle, and I don't think, I don't think we're at a point where people understand that comic book people understand that, yeah. right? But think about every time you see a movie and you get a sequel, you want it to be better than that. And the first thing that comes to mind, Fast and the Furious. Every okay. Fast and the Furious seems to get more and more and more over the top, outrageous. Yeah, yeah, more and more over the top. That you know, they're taking on tanks and flying in the air. Oh no, that's the eighteen. <laughs> um, but you know, it, but but yeah. you know, it gets to the point where you know we know it's sci-fi, right? Yeah. But it's got to be believable sci-fi, right? It's got to well, be like that's got to be line. like that's my yeah. line. I I can I'm you you can get me on on science fiction and 
but you got to give me the realistic of you know I, you got to give me something i can touch and go it's plausible in that scenario yeah. but mm -hmm. you can't give me you know yeah jumping like it's like jumping a car through a window of a building to enter the other that, that never happens building. well that, never, you can't do it you don't have enough speed there's no way it's no way well, and part of the differences, though, is that you know you're talking about the comic book world versus in the Fast and the Furious is not even that. It, it's based on a reality type of scenario, and it's not reality. And like you said, they, they have to. The first one was good enough, but they if they can't play the same storyline out, otherwise nobody watches. So they have to go to these extremes. And then you're like, oh man, maybe the next one will be good. And then we keep watching. Where do we go from here? Let's go into yeah. space. Listen, like, I, I, <laughs> it's what just, I. When I watch sci-fi, I got to just be able to close my eyes a little bit and say, okay, that's good. But if I got to close my eyes and keep them shut for a couple of minutes and say, that's believable, that's a problem. Here's, <laughs> you know, Dave in the chat room mentions, uh, uh, Dave Sanson mentions uh, Adam Warlock and where it happened to him. And I got to tell you, that whole piece, they messed up from the beginning Correct. of the storyline of how, you know, Thanos really lost the, the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they, that was not the way it happened. And so they wanted, uh, I guess the studio wanted the the the, uh, the heroes to be the heroes and not Adam Warlock, but it truly yeah, they, they uh, definitely uh, missed the boat yeah. on that. Well, yeah. they, they also you know gave you the wrong reason as to why Thor wanted the Infinity Gauntlet. That wasn't even the real reason, uh, as we know in the right. comics. You know, it was for you know to impress Death, and so yeah. it, it, there was a lot of different things there. So they did mess it up from the beginning. I wish we all were talked about. Oh. Is, she, is we going to see Adam Warlock coming into play? And he never did, unfortunately. Hey, and just to correct you, Mike, it was Thanos, not Thor, who wanted to go. Oh, yeah. Is that what I said, Thor? Well, yeah. yeah. Well, I can't help but see. When I see his biceps now, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> <Thanos. that's> <laughs> so, uh, well, I mean, they still working on the Eternals. They still, I mean, I don't know how they're going to tie all this in. Um, I, You know, they're missing the boat. Can we still get a Galactus in here somehow, some way? Um, You know, I'd like to see that. I mean, there's, there's still a, there's a ton excellent storyline i know we just came off on a whole other tangent here but there's a ton of storylines and when you when we talk about storyline i'm worried about the next doctor strange why hmm. i that you, i did you see you, you saw the cast of people they're putting in there that, that is going to be cameos that will not be the entire movie that's what i mean so the the rumor of course is that uh or from from what we can tell um our sources say that yeah they'll have uh toby mcguire uh Andrew, in there Andrew garfield have, yeah, Andrew yeah. Garfield. So the Spider Man. They'll have obviously Tom Holland. Uh, I think at some point, but th to have the multiverse, you know, come in to play, and I, I, again, that's just Doctor Strange. That's okay. It's going to be a cameo. They'll be in and out. They will not have that much screen time, and that's okay. That creates a laughter. That creates a oh, you got to be kidding me kind of moment. Uh, 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 moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mood, you're absolutely correct because I mean, we we know the um, the Spider Man into the spider verse the animation version we saw tons of spider-man so yeah. there's nothing wrong this is perfect it plays into this this movie perfectly because the, the name of it multiverse so i like you said moose it's going to be great because you're going to see that and you're going to remember that and it's going to come together I, there's not too many people in it. it's not That's, wrong dave sanson says i predict dr strange can do no wrong you're absolutely correct david he has yeah. never done any wrong really in the in the comics that i can ever recall and i think that's super cool because mm -hmm. uh, that's the way he is that's his character i mean that's what he you know conjures i mean that's that's the deal but, yeah uh, and and uh, dave i don't i just i still think there's believable sci-fi out there just so you know Brian the chat room says that uh, Adam Warlock will be in the next phase, and that's I guess we'll have to see just how that's you know used uh, if they can use him a different way for a bigger villain. Who can be? Who can play Adam Warlock? Who can play a good Adam Warlock? Uh, mm. Me? Well, yeah, yeah. There's not a there's not a character you can't play good, man. You're like three Thors. That's true. That's true. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I've really I've never really thought about Adam Warlock. I, Mads Mikkelsen. We start. Oh, oh wow. don't, even, don't even start. Don't even start. You know. <laughs> He's not as good as actor as uh, <laughs> Johnny Depp. Hey, listen, we, we stopped. We I think we actually did talk about uh, Adam Warlock for just like a brief minute because that's all he was there for. So yeah, mm. yeah. We'll um we'll we'll see we'll see how that uh, we visit that Adam, Adam Driver. Nope, nope. No, oh, you don't think so, Adam Driver? No, not at all. Um, I'd have to I'd have to see it. I'd have to put the hair and put the 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 the. Yeah. Uh, Color on his skin, like I'd have to see it. Somebody, please do that, digitize and send it to me. <laughs> he definitely, he definitely doesn't have the acting chops for that. You don't think? No, he's pretty. I don't know. Good, I don't know. He says Brian knows. Brian knows. 
No, I, 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 he's pretty good. Um, um, yeah, I, I think you got to give that some time. I think he, I, I'm not saying he's, he is or he isn't game God. I'm just saying when you see him, don't, you can't just take Kylo Ren and go, okay, that that's, that is, that's at his best. Yeah. I got I got I guess I got to see his resume of other stuff. You got to look at his other stuff. Yeah. I don't think you do have to look at his resume. I think, I think I can picture him actually, now that we're talking about, it, I can picture him playing at a Morlock. I really mm, can. No. no different than, um, you know, Twilight playing, uh, Robert Patterson playing at Batman. Well, well, that that is true. That is true. We were we were all kind of surprised at that one. Uh, Moose yeah. wasn't. So, no, I was not. I still think that he's going to do a great job. Uh, let's just you, you watch. Okay. Uh, all right, let's let's move on. Speaking of great jobs, um, let's look at uh, let's 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 start with um, Mando. Mando, will take up a little, just a couple of minutes. Um, on this, uh, you, you got to post that last comment before we hit it. Just to, where's, where's <laughs> Dave, Dave's last comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that's funny all right and for Man. the podcast uh, folks that aren't watching he says yeah. uh, i'll take driver as warlock way before i take him as the supreme leader of the first order so <laughs> that might be uh that might be true oh not uh, like the comment by day thank you Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i keep saying it over and over again that's my substance no <laughs> i just don't want it uh <laughs> <laughs> Is it all right free? no <laughs> uh let's go on to uh let's go on to um mando real fast you guys saw the uh the latest episode of mando right correct yes. yes all right all right so um remind us what happened game guy tell us give us a little small recap of what took place this past uh this past episode so the the long of it short is they meet up with some old friends um the marshal Kara, she's Kara Dune is now the marshal, yeah, I guess. And, and um uh and uh the other guy, I Carl Weathers. Well, I Carl can't Weathers remember. A, yeah, his, his his yeah, I can't remember his name name. That's um, but they meet up and they meet up with a fish guy, looks like a fish guy, uh -huh. or sc scaly guy. I'm giving you my version of it. Okay. Anyway, so so they're going they're, they're going to look for um some information yeah. at some place. Anyway, long story short, there's a lot of stormtroopers, yeah. there's a lot of there's a lot of fighting, there's a lot of shooting. This, uh, there's a lot of jokes, and that's the end of the episode. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> let, oh. let me just say though, if we talk about filler episodes, this was a filler episode, right? Am I wrong? But, yes, yes. Again, okay. you you hear a lot of Baby Yoda, ooh ah, baby, goo goo gaga, and you know, and <laughs> and and and, and uh, I mean, it's, it's true. Like it, they really are cashing in on this Baby Yoda piece. Like now that now they're giving him lines like baby lines and and now Mando's playing more of a dad than anything else. So it's like <laughs> I I I feel I hit the comedy's there and yeah it's a good chuckle here and there. But when you put it in an episode to Moose to your point and the way I described it that it's a filler, <laughs> yeah, this is uh, like uh, and it's a and it's a filler. Then it, Brian says it's not a filler. Yeah. Um, it, it, you may say it's not a filler. They may be, they were like one, two, three lines here and there that kind of moved the story along. Okay, but if, okay. you, if you and spend 35, I get it. I get it. Yeah, Brian's mm -hmm. got, a point. And, and I appreciate that. No question. But, but and there was also a dark figure in the background with jeans mm -hmm. and watch, but that's, that's uh, another, another. <laughs> <laughs> was a dark figure. Cause the shirt was a white color. Well, well, I was like green, but uh, yeah, but yeah. Maybe right. <laughs> But either way, listen, I'm with Brian on this. I, I'm surprised, Moose, that you're saying this was a filler. There were some filler things that happened in it, but there's a lot of backstory that preparing you, like like uh, Brian said with the Dark Trooper. I mean, getting to see that probably was a filler in episode two. Thank see, you. That's what, that's what Game God said, is it? And that's what you and Game God both said, was it? We did say yeah. that, uh, yeah. that one, but this one was I a disagree. little different. What's that? I, I disagreed with that. Keep going. Keep going. You did. But this one was a little different. There were some cool little things that we saw as a filler where, you know, Baby Yoda takes the macaroons from yeah. the other, uh, call them macaroons, with cookies. Like yeah, that's what we're like, yeah. uh -huh. He takes them when he's in class. Going to the classroom itself, didn't that take you back to Jedi school? Come on. Yeah, How did yeah. you get excited when you see the classroom of kids? I mean, yeah. these are things that are cool. They're not just uh, filler because at some point you see where – things start to change. I mean, it, there was a, a time when they walk into the, because uh, Moose, I mean, Gigi went from the beginning to the end so quickly. I'm going to skip around. When they're on the the, the the base camp or whatever you want to call it, and they're in, with, they're with the clones, th did that look like Snoke to anybody that was in there? And it, 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 I, I, I had thought about that and had them, they're making Snoke and things like that. I, I thought about that that was the, the you know, forte. Well, well, but that's us reaching and, and implying. Is. Come on. Reaching. Reaching. Oh, I'm Star reaching. Wars. 
But you don't know until they tell you. You don't know. You're right. But I mean, don't you get to see the 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 uh, modified version of Luke's speeder? I mean, I, it, which I thought that was pretty cool. The homages of, to certain things like the speeder and the yeah, next, I know the those are the, cool had make the, the coolant rise and uh, yeah. he had to walk on the thing like Obi Wan, you know. Did. <laughs> yes. and they made the joke, that is no handrails, <laughs> like <laughs> that's kind of well, funny. You know, and I, I love the, I love X wings. Don't get me wrong. And yeah, I got yeah, yeah. by the way, I didn't know if you guys knew this or not. I didn't realize it. I was just checking it out. But the, the so the same two X wings are there. Only one of the. Uh, um, uh, patrol uh, patrolmen are there, but in the last one we talked about, when both of them were there, when in the episode two, Dave Filoni played the other character. He played Trapper Wolf. He no, did. He, didn't. he did. He played Trapper yeah. Wolf. I didn't even know that at the time. I thought that was really cool. That so is. So we cool. made. Yeah, I noticed that. Um, is it the best. The best part of the episode was the is obviously the when Moss uh, when Moff Gideon comes out and right. and you got and you get to see him. You know, it, it, that's the best part. He's wearing like the Vader-ish type outfit, yeah. you know, and you see yeah. all the, the dark troopers. So that's the only piece that you're like, mm, that fits no. the story. That moves. Us. Yes. The, the, everything you talked about, Mike, were all nostalgic pieces, all inside joke, Easter eggs, stuff like what that. What are you talking about? It's Star Wars. Listen, I calm down there, buddy. I understand. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but what I'm saying is that it, it, this, the episode before was great great episode before mm -hmm. and then here we go there's only eight episodes in a season i don't have time to be giving me episodes where i only get five minutes of information from a 35 40 minute episode but listen we got half the season gone already what are you gonna give me two more fillers and two more episodes and leave me on a cliffhanger wow. come on man mm -hmm. if this so if this 13 15 18 episodes this is acceptable this is not acceptable in an eight season episode uh, so, a, a so we find out where Cara Dune is from. She's from Alderaan. I, I don't mean, care. Are you familiar with where Alderaan is? Do you know what that one is? In case you're wondering, that's not reaching. That's actually some storyline there. And this is important. Who cares? I, I she, like she, she, oh, who, who, cares? Wow. who cares? What's what's the name of the show? Mandalorian. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. But I'm just saying they you got Bo Katan and us uh, and Ahsoka Tano coming up and we're still talking about Kara. I don't want to know about her character. You have to. Come on, you can't just dismiss her. That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, hey. I, I want to go to the to the, you know fast forward to the end. You mentioned uh, uh, Moff Gideon and, and of course uh, Brian in the chat room talked about the uh, dark troopers. Yeah, those lines of them. That's kind of cool. So you see, you know what what is it that makes those guys super cool? What are they? What makes them super bad? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm excited to see that version in the in the future because you know they're gonna they're going to be uh, better uh, than the regular uh, stormtrooper or you know clone troopers. Uh, mm -hmm. So I'm I'm excited to see that. Um, what did you expect to see, Gigi? Sorry, moves. What did you expect to see? No, I mean it's not an expectation of what I want to see, it but is. I want to. Uh, but but what I don't want to see is what I saw this last episode, where all I got was five minutes. Where literally I was doing other stuff during the episode and was like, ah, eh, this is not really going on here. And to the last five minutes, where I sat down, rewound it again because I felt like, oh man, there's some stuff here to look at. <laughs> like, like it's it's just it's just not enough. Right, I I feel like this season is it's a 50-50 at this point, and and if they I, I go back to to episode two, the filler episode again, where we said was a filler, and Moose disagree with it. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that this this is again you, they're giving us five minutes. I'm beginning to think J.J. Abrams is filming this because that's what he does. Wow. He get, he does a whole film, he does a whole episode, and he leaves you on a cliffhanger in the last five minutes so you can come back for the next episode. So you want you want the Mandalorian to be over in like three seasons? That's what you're saying. No, I want the Mandalorian to be about the Mandalorian, not okay. about the Marshal. Okay. Well, okay. Let me, let's let's do this though. Let's do this for for just a moment. Uh, let's talk about um, uh, you know what's to come because we know that they're going to go to uh, you know uh, find Ahsoka Tano. How much of Ahsoka Tano will we see in the Mandalorian? What do you think? Uh, I, I'm going to stick to my original statement from last episode, which is she will show last, up next last. episode. No, she's yeah. going to show up the next episode, which is where Dave Filoni directs and written. Okay, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Uh, I, I agree with your your take on that. Did you see who directed this past one? Did you see that? Yeah, Carl yeah. Weathers. Carl Weathers. Yeah. Weathers. Yeah. Okay. No, that's kind of cool. Weathers. Yeah, and, and, and that's cool as well. You know, I, I there's some. I'm not saying it's not good. What I'm saying is that I shouldn't be getting this in an eight episode in an eight episode season. I should not be getting this because we're going to get this. It's going to be over the third, fourth week of December. I think the last episode is Christmas week. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we're done for a year. 
No, and I, it was I, a year. Yes, it's going to be oh, a year. It won't. No, it okay. won't. It was, a, it was a year. It was a year between the last two, uh, or ten months. I'm sorry. Yeah, they came in October. It's too much different. So even if, even if that was the case, I don't know what you're wanting, what you're expecting. That's why I asked the question. I want, I want this to be like when Clone Wars came out, the cartoon the animated Clone Wars. Every episode was a great episode. You're right. It was. Now let me let me let me pause there just for a moment because when we get into Star Trek here in this next uh, segment, uh, I want to kind of revert back to that. It's just like I did a while back. Uh, I had the same feeling as I do with Star Trek Discovery, and that is that you know it's moving too fast at times. Where I go, what are they doing? Why are they moving the story so fast? And there's no build up. There's no like I, I don't understand. So at least in this in Mando. You're at least getting the build up to something. Um, without that, it'd just be, you know, oh well, we need to go to uh um, you know, uh Tatooine. We're, we're there. Uh guess what? Well, we need to find somebody. Oh, well, we, we found them. Like <laughs> that's what's going on <laughs> in Star Trek. You want. That's what you want. I know well, but I have a problem with that. So yeah, so too. here's here's the problem. Star Trek Discovery is like 15 episodes, right? <laughs> So that's a problem in a 15 episode season. You're going too fast. In an eight episode season where the episodes go anywhere from 30 minutes to 40 minutes, they're not even set. You can't have that inconsistency. That's in Star Trek, you, you have episodes to kind of throw away. And in Star Trek, where you have the standalone episodes in Star Trek, you know, they those are the things where you can do that with. And to your point, that again, start this if you want to transition. Are we transitioning at this point? Because uh, I got go ahead, to go ahead. yeah, let's let's keep on keep on right. Listen, it, it, Star Trek Discovery. I, I I feel like if this was the first season, I would never watch the show. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't. Have, yeah. This yeah. this this season is just going. It feels like um The Walking Dead. It it's just yeah. going from worse and worse and worse. This episode. Wow. Just, this episode that just happened. I hate. I hate to say this because I look forward to these two shows every week. And for me to sit there and say I watch Mandalorian, I can I can sit through Mandalorian. To sit there to Star Trek, Star Trek is starting to become a drag now because the story has no purpose. The only thing I had liked in this episode was this. I'm intrigued with the Philippa storyline. That's the only thing hey, I'm intrigued wait, with. Wait. That see, I'm, thanks for jumping right to the end of the show. Um, yeah. That is uh, is definitely something that is keeps me hanging on because mm -hmm. the rest of it, I'm like, this is moving way too fast. This isn't. This isn't. This isn't the first two seasons that we saw of Star Trek. Uh, discovery like it it seems to be moving too fast it's like they have a whole different Mike, crew Mike, writing come on hold on Mike, Mike, they they Mike all of a sudden go, well we got to go to we got to find the federation shoot, here we are uh we just sport drive to the federation and guess what we got to go find shoot oh here it is here's the ship we're looking for oh let's get them out of here shoot yep, uh, here we are like it is just ridiculous hey, now uh, now there's on. a whole now there's a whole it's my turn it is my turn. turn you talked enough gg it is my turn you guys are crazy i was with you initially going into uh episode three and four but but episode five it was much better it started off a little bit not like i liked because now we're talking about two episodes i got pages here, but we're yep. talking about two episodes so when they first get to the federation they meet them all these cool things i mean all the, so talk about little easter eggs you saw voyager a version of the last thing like that. you also saw the uss nog if anybody's familiar with that that's not i like that that was the a nod it's, because the, the actor that played him he recently passed by the way yes exactly this is so, mike's so, where mike's well go hey, ahead mike hey, yeah stop well. go ahead <laughs> Do your freeze? Do your freeze one. Go ahead. Do your freeze. Okay. <laughs> but even though they had, to, they used the sport drive to. Uh, that was Frog Thor. Yeah. <laughs> they used the sport drive to get to where their mission. They they actually had a mission, and this is what was good about uh, episode five. They actually had a mission. They go. They they try to uh, to find these uh, um, uh, the DNA of this particular race to come re to save this race, and it it took oh. time. This is true true Star Trek, and what we know. They go there. They they went to find the seeds of the plant yeah. that they yeah. took off, so they could kind of figure out what was uh, why their DNA changed and, and the original plant that that may have changed it. So yeah, okay, keep going. I like that idea. That was yeah. Fine. This, is all, this is all Star Trek. They do this. They they solve the problem. They they start coming together. Okay. And then uh, the what's her name is the first one to leave Star Trek that we see because she's going to stay behind. Right. Okay. Let me pause you though there. Okay. So okay. I appreciate all of that. That was fine to me. I thought. That episode five was much better than six, although I, I did like parts of six, but that's it. Um, 
the fact though that from the from getting there, I love the way that the new admiral. Uh, but I always love that character. Mm-hmm. His, his guy, uh, the the actor, I can't remember his name, but anyway, um, I love the way that he presented it and the Starfleet and and because uh, you didn't know whether you should trust him or not trust him. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, and, but the journey it seems to be too quickly. So they just go. I do agree with that. Yeah. I do agree with that. But I don't think it's making the show back because I think they've started to make that turn where they're starting to have missions. The only thing that's still a problem is they still keep going back to the poor us that I'm tired of. But everything else, it looks like they're starting to go to the missions. And you know, as an example, when you talk about the Philippa story, that started in episode five where she sits mm-hmm. down yes. and she uh, section she knows, thirty-one guy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I forget his character name, but. Uh, Krovich or something like that. But uh, anyway, so we see that starts to play out. And then in episode six, for me, that that became just as good. Here's the problem I'm having. And believe it or not, it's the star of the show. It's Michael Burton. She seems to have one one direction that she goes. It's uh, okay. I'm I'm here's what I think we should do. I know. And I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do the opposite thing that that I should do. And then it's always the Oh, I know we, you know, this and that and her, the way she brings everything about, I don't like, um, let me talk to about that for a moment. Cause I think this is exactly what, uh, you guys were saying. I, I it kind of references to me what, um, when you were talking about, um, uh, what's his name becoming captain, um, Saru. So when you're yeah. saying that, you know, you didn't think he was, uh, he didn't seem like a, a Saru type or, um, a captain type player or, or, or character. And I'm like, no, I see it. I see it. And then, um, we kind of see the opposite because I don't see Burnham as a captain. No, um, yeah, I don't. And I, as a matter of fact, I don't see her as a first, uh, uh as a command, as a number, I, as a number one, the number yeah, one. She, She's definitely yeah. taking herself out of that. And she ends up going to the end of it. She ends up being saying, taking a, sign, uh, a science officer. Yeah. Now she's right. just a science officer. She's science officer. I, 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 I don't even think she's a science officer at this point. She's just like a rebel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know where they're going to take this character. Cause she's a main character. They, something's got to happen. It's got to turn around. I don't know if they can or not. Um, but she doesn't think she's learned anything, but you know, again, we have the Philippa story, which is fine. Uh, we, it, for those who, for here's an inside thing for you. Uh, they're looking when they, when they go to the planet where the the Orions. By the way, I am a, re- waiting to see the Orion Syndicate women because that's who controls the the Orions. Yeah. If, if they don't, yeah. If you don't remember that, that's right. The the the, the ladies control that. Not it's uh, literally not the guys. Uh, you're, yeah. you're right. And when you find out that she's the, the woman in charge of the planet. Yeah. But when they get there, what are they looking for? They're looking for self-sealing stem bolts. Now, for anybody who follows Star Trek, TNG, and D- DS9, it's a big thing that they talk about self-sealing stem bolts. They do it in Enterprises, too. So that was kind of a little kickback. You saw an old phaser. Um, yeah, which is cool. Now, Brian mentions in the, in the chat room talking about, uh, you know, basically saying that uh, um, Burnham is a lot like Captain Kirk. You know, like he's he's got to make it fun. No of way. But, but no, well, he's he's got a point that the only difference is, is that not as uh, not as we've seen um, it what's, evolve. Was uh, Captain Kurt more smooth at it? Maybe that's what it is. She's like she's very abrupt. Yeah, I think I think that's probably the difference. Is Captain Kirk was more smooth because he he had that charisma um, about him that maybe she is more abrupt. But she also she also feels like, and I think Mr. Moose is alluding to. She feels like she's lost that edge. Um, even though she's rebelling, she's lost the edge yeah. of being. Uh, in charge. Well, here's here's the thing. I liked her in season one. I thought she was the breakout star in season one. I liked her yeah. in season two. Yeah. I even though it, she, she, I think she grew more in season two, and we've talked about that. I think in season three, I don't know. It's because they're trying to that the the jump to the future messed her up, kind of deal, and the, the year that she wasn't with Discovery kind of put her individualized. But I don't like this character. It does not fit the formula no. of Discovery. So the yin and the yang for me, I, you know, is supposed to be, I guess, uh, Saru and Burnham. I think that's mm-hmm. the yin and yang piece that's supposed to, you know, how it's supposed to survive. But uh, she's so far yin or so far yang. I don't know which one. Mm-hmm. Um, that it's it, it doesn't it doesn't equate. So it it's very difficult. It's like so, Brian. I, I, I want to talk to you specifically. It's like having uh, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, uh, McCoy as uh the captain you know like it wouldn't work you know mccoy's not a captain i love mm-hmm. mccoy um you know as a doctor but i don't like him as a captain 
Yes. And, I, and I think that's the, that's the difference. Um, you know, it, it's it, and you can't put, you know, Saru is more like a Spock at captain, you know, which, you know, that's that's believable. And that's why I said I could see it. And mm -hmm. although you saw him when he was talking to the admiral about, you know, really, he's just going, OK, yeah, whatever we got to do <laughs> instead of questioning him going, well, wait a minute. Uh, he was all about, you know, uh, company man. He's a company man. Hey, let me, let, let, you, this is what you asked for. This is what I'm going to deliver on. But, uh -huh. but let me, let me, let me jump in there for a quick second, Moose. On yeah. Saru, at the end of episode six, Saru, I think, is starting to come out of his shell when he had that conversation with Burnham about how he told her, you're no longer my number one. And yeah. I think that's where you're starting to see Saru mature into that. That was his, probably his first toughest decision he had to make oh, because sure. he, because and I think that made his character kind of evolve a little bit. And I and I at that point in the series, I'm like, I like Saru better than Burnham. <laughs> yeah, no, and this is this is important because remember I said that he I did not see him as a captain. Um, and this is if what you're saying is correct, Gigi, then I, I hope that is the truth, and I hope we're gonna start to see him become a Starfleet captain because that's key. Mm -hmm. But of course, the other question is who's gonna replace who's gonna be number one now? Uh, I I think what's the redheaded girl character? He was yeah. he he was starting to really get a uh, yeah. I know you're shaking your head. I don't see her there yet, but I can see that being groomed because she's they've been giving her a lot of screen time and a yeah. lot of a lot of uh, a lot of development with her story. So um, I mean, I just don't like currently. Um, episode five was a great episode. I did like that episode. I uh, know I didn't say it. Episode six for me was not that great. The only thing that keeps me going is the Philippa storyline because yeah. I want to know is that Section 31 guy, we're going to call him that because I don't remember his name, is he yeah. the new Section 31 of the year 3000? And the coolest part of, by the way, in episode five is when Philippa blinks the holograms away. I love that. Because that. That, I'm looking at her like, what's But that whole eyes? interaction between her and the holograms and the, the other guy, like, um, it was so you, you got to see a, a, another side of her that you're like, Oh wow. She's much smarter than what mm -hmm. we gave. That I gave her credit for Like she is, she's on it. She's like, I know this stuff already. <laughs> like, right. You, you talk, yeah. You know, like she's like in 12th grade and they put her in preschool, you know? And she's like, oh, I'm gonna tear this up. So, yeah. uh, I, like I can't, that. I can't wait for her spinoff. I will be watching her spinoff. I, well, I can tell you that. So, well, so the question becomes, why is she, what are these visions she's having? What is she, what is, what's happening here? Because she's been through what, three, three different, um, universes, mirror universes or yeah. two well, and three or two different. Yeah. Well, well, what's the bigger question is how does that guy know about the mirror universe? Because he's, he seems to know a lot about the mirror universe yeah. and, and the other pieces. She mentioned his glasses. She didn't mention his glasses for no reason. Yeah. So, so, and I think those glasses did something to her in the same way that she blunk, blinked the holograms out. So I think that's, I think that they either tapped her on, you know, her subconsciousness or they brainwashed her or whatever the case may be. Um, <laughs> that's, that's funny, but I, I, I'd really like to see. And I think that to your point, Moose, where you're talking about the, the they're like going too fast with the story. I think the Federation storyline, it's not even the storyline at this point anymore. I think that's the back. That's the background story. I think the story is the Philippa storyline. And I think that's to set her up for her spinoff. I don't know about well, that, but I, but I, I, I do like the the dilithium piece. I th I still think it's going to yeah. be to find out. So it will be. And by the way, this is Star Trek. The storyline is Star Trek. In case you're wondering, Gigi. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah, I th I did like. Uh, we saw. We knew we were going to see book again. They don't put somebody on the f you know the front <laughs> cover of the book. And 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 we, and we knew there were going to be love interest. Yeah, of course. Uh, and and again, we saw him, and that was fine. I, I thought that was great. I love to see the ship transform and 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 start blasting telluroids all over, all over the place. But I, I was it was fun to see them again, to, though too. And I, I like that. I like to see the uh, you know the different races out there that we know Star Trek to have. I love that. I love it. I I by the way, um, I we saw a um, what was a Kira in um. What was she? I can't remember what she was from uh, Deep Space Nine. Bajoran. Yeah, she was Bajoran. Yep, Bajoran. she was. We saw uh, Bajoran there in that yep. in that piece. I thought that was pretty pretty cool. Uh, yeah, was but, but the new emblem, a new the new symbol. Yes, I, I um, want to talk about that for a moment. First of all, the new tech that they gave is all cool. We know we're we're seeing the um. This is the old one. This is the uh, Section Thirty One yes. uh, Star Trek, which I still have here. But um, I just think that that um it's 
it's almost too much. And I, and th that part of me doesn't like that. I'm a tech guy. I love, I love to see new tech if it's in the future, but, um, um, I'm glad they're, I think it's cool that they're retrofitting it, but it's almost like you have availability for too much and it's just too easy. Uh, well, I don't we, like we see this in movies all the time. Moose with tech. I mean, you have the, the, um, uh, the, the remake of, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie. I forget what it's called now. Not the running man, but the other one. Recall. 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 Oh where you know they pull up their hand and they can make a phone call by tapping in space. And so yeah. it's, it's it's the same concept. We see these things happen all the time. To me this was this was so awesome to see, you know, the the nacelles are no longer attached, um to see all these different technology that they have. And what you know, one of the pilot was like, "Do we need all this?" And the other guy was like, "Yeah, we do." <laughs> that part was awesome. I thought it was funny. Well, like I said, I think it's cool that they're they're fitting the the, the ship for it, but Again, I just think when the you know the badge displays the you know the the hologram type yep. thing, you start push, pushing things around and moving it around. That's cool, but at the same time, it's like there's no challenge anymore. Oh, we got to get out of this situation, and then they're gone. You know, like it's a personal teleporter. Uh, and I go, man, it's just too easy to get out of you know situations. I, 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 where's the? Ch I want to see more of a challenge on that on that side. Well, um, but but it looked like. By the way, though, it looked like a Bajorn uh, type symbol, I think, from remember what their their old yeah. badges looked like. There's it, oval. Yes, it was oval. And that, this one, and I, when I first saw it, I was like, is that a Bajorn uh, 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 like badge? I mean, are we get are they getting duped here and they just don't realize it? But uh, obviously, it's not, but it looks, it looks really like it. Because the, the, where they were going, they're talking about the Bajorn Trading Center, whatever yeah. they call it. So that's interesting. Yeah. That could be Deep Space Nine, by the way. That would be interesting to see if that came into play. Oh, By the way, it, it wasn't so easy for Linus, who kept showing up in the wrong spot when he was trying to tell that. Him. That was hilarious. That <laughs> was this is not the science room. This is not the science room. So I thought I thought that was pretty hilarious. Um, I you know to your to your point with the transmitter on the everything is in that badge. Um, I I, I agree with you, Moose. I think that's just too much there. It, you know, there's just too much. But there's something to be said when they said that it. The dash, I go call it the dash, the interface that the, with the ship, that it can now sense your like your emotions and everything. It's cool in one way. Can I go ahead and say it? And I'm going to tell you something to add on to it. And, and right, I think that the storyline with the girl who pilots the ship is something's going to come out of that because we still haven't closed that storyline on why yeah. she's been. So, so I think that that when she connects, we're going to start to figure out why she's having these breakdowns mm -hmm. or that she's having. What do you what do you think your theory is? Oh, and, and I was thinking that uh, it it does different things so that everybody can do something different to the ship, and it'll recognize mm -hmm. you don't have to always have the same pattern of oh the, oh the last time he jumped a hyper you know he did this and then with the warp drive and then he did the spore drive no Tap, it could slide it could, it could do whatever around. that's what I mean it could be individualized yeah. to what they see and that's kind of cool but anyway what do you think the new the uh, the song thing is about what do you what do you what, what's your idea on that? The song piece. That's yeah, a, that's yeah, a question for same, you, Mike. The same, yeah, the same uh, a tune, the same song that they're seeing in different people. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. It's going to be something to do with uh, something implanted or something that they're they're getting probably from the Federation. I bet. Mm. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it might be a plant. Yeah, that's a good one. I haven't thought the about. Federation it. is they they are bad guys. Is what you're telling me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that might be true uh, guys you know what that sound means that means we got to get out of here thanks for everybody uh joining us on facebook live we appreciate it uh special thanks to uh dave sampson of course i was just leaving you've been listening to podcast for sci-fi with moose game god and magic mike Nerds have more fun. If it's anything sci-fi, we're talking about it. We had fun, and we hope you did too. We have to split, but we'll be back soon. In the meantime, hit us up at podcast 4 scifi.com. This is Podcast for Sci-Fi, where all things sci-fi come to life. Come to life.